All right, so welcome to part three of the Unidrill restoration. Uh, that's going to be the actual Unidrill arm itself. So this is straight off of the column. We're going to get this taken apart and cleaned up and ready to get refinished and put back together. So we'll start now. All right, so right here I am pulling out the bolts that hold the two halves of the gear case or the column clamshell uh, together. The two on this side thread into the casting itself. Uh, one on the other side there um, has a nut which is fixed into the casting and then the upper one is for the handle which is a, basically a cam lock and it locks the whole assembly in position on the column. Uh, so that's got a set screw that holds one end and then the other end is uh, tightened by that lever. So now I'm able to slide these two halves apart. Uh, there, there is a shaft that holds that gear uh, that slides between the two. And then what we have left in there is the crank handle with the worm gear on the crank handle. So now I'm just going to take the set screw out that's going to allow me to remove that shaft, that spindle. So I put it in the vise and tap it out with a punch. Uh, it was a little stubborn, so in an effort to not want to obviously crack or damage the casting or mar that shaft too much, I put some PB Blaster and punched that shaft right out. Okay, get that out. Perfect. Okay, so here's what it is. Inside here, on this big stud, that it all rotates on. There's a circlet. I used a pick to get in and start that spring clamp, uh, get it out of the groove, and once I got one end out of the groove, I was able to slide the pick around and pull off the spiral clip that way. So, I don't know, if you've ever taken um, the blade guard or the barber off of a circular saw, you're familiar with these, but it's basically a spiralized clip. That holds things up. So now that should slide out. At this point I was able to separate the uh, two pieces from uh, each other and remove the main swivel pin from the arm itself. So just pop that out, and on the other end, of course, there's another clip. So I work on this. Basically, gonna get this gear out. Everything's gonna get cleaned, 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 put back together. Of course, when all is said and done. Stop and say here that I wasn't able to get that worm gear off of the crankshaft at this particular time. The gear was on there with a taper pin that was so frozen in there that I ended up letting it soak in penetrating oil uh, for a day or so before I was able to punch it out. But I did ultimately get that out and was able to get that whole crank and worm gear assembly removed. Just took, it just took some time. So here I'm taking out the two large bolts that hold the two pieces together. That piece with the flat face that is up right now is what rotates against the unidrill arm itself and the back of course is the other portion of the gear case that goes on the column so taking these two bolts out allowed me to separate those two pieces they're still indexed and held together with a couple of tension pins but you'll notice as those bolts are out i'm able to tap it with a hammer and get them separated Okay, real fast recap here. So here's one half of the crankcase. Interference plate. Here's the other half of the crankcase. Here's the main gear. Here's the spindle that the two halves rotate on. The handle. Mounted face plate with the scale on it. Last of all, the massive arm. We're getting all these things in the parts washer, get them all cleaned up. 
and move on to paint. Parts washers are a complete godsend on a project like this with pieces that are larger or uh, inconvenient to wash by other means. So I typically will bring all the components to the parts washer to get all the grease, get the dirt, get the grime, get the years of uh, build up off of them. Uh, and then this is a solvent based parts washer. So at that point I'm able to get everything clean, get everything dried off and then proceed from there with paint. Pull some stuff out of the old evaporust. So in this bath, I have these um, square nuts that are for the rotation lock. These came out really well. Okay. In most instances, after the evaporust is used, you want to rinse it with water, clean them off, and then ap apply some sort of uh, rust preventative like WD-40 to prevent them Absolutely from amazing. rusting back up or flash rusting. Here, what I did was just clean them off. I did not rinse them, cleaned them off, and then applied a WD-40 coat in order to prevent any rust. Most off. The unsung hero of this restoration right there is that five gallon bucket. Here we've got parts that are clean and ready for reassembly. These are the two main gears in the gear case that allows it to move up and down the column. And here again, two main gears. So at this point I have all of my parts cleaned, de-rusted using evaporust and painted. Um, I didn't film the painting, it's very straightforward, prep, prime, paint. So I have my pieces, what I'm going to do now is just clean these machined edges. So I've got my rear column cover, my front half of the gear case, have my two main gears, shaft, spindle and crank for the main gears, cam lock for the uh, column lock, interface plate, pivot plate, and the 35 pound arm itself, hardware's on the box. I used my die grinder and a Scotch-Brite wheel to prepare the surfaces of the parts that will mate together. They don't seal, as I said, so it's not mandatory that they're clean like they're going to be gasketed, but I do like to have a good, clean, polished surface prior to any waxing or any assembly. So I went ahead and cleaned up all these surfaces. Now that I've got these parts cleaned up, um, I'm going to paste wax them, which is really my favorite way to keep them rust free and uh, nice and lubricated too. So I use Johnson's paste wax. And so I'm really just going to get a coat of it on. Haze up, we'll buff it off. Now this short column here, this only goes inside the arm and up into the head. That's all it does. It doesn't move. It's completely fixed. Um, there's actually a couple of collars here, bearings that work in conjunction with that head there. Um, so two set screws are going in the front of the arm that locks these short column which you can see on the right of the screen, that locks that short column in. Now we're going to assemble the rear of the gear case with the pivot plate. Those roll pins there allow for alignment. Okay, so press fit these. Okay. Get 
those going together. So now I can get those two large bolts put back in and tightened down. That portion will be reassembled. And then that portion meets up with the arm and that pivot pin. Main pivot shaft is here. We have to introduce our interface plate. And so this slides on. And we're able to connect these two halves. Tilt it back. And now this thing has to get installed. So this is a clip. Okay, so now we've got the pivot. So these bolts are what locks the pivot in place. So there's a bolt on either side that goes straight through. And as you can see in the back where that square nut is, there's a section that limits the swivel or the pivot of these two pieces. And right now I'm putting in the pivot stop on top with a roll pin. So that flips forward and allows for a indexable 90 degree stop on the head. So, what we've got is our main handle. This is what goes through now. A few pieces in the mix here. We have a spacer bushing here, which goes in first. That's it. To the okay. and we have a, sh uh, a threaded collar. So here's that pesky roll pin or taper pin rather again. Uh, this time went smoothly putting it back in. Now you can see I do put a little bit of grease on the bottom of the gear but these two gears are typically meant to be oiled instead of greased. Reassembling that casting now with those bolts uh, in the rear and the locking handle. Now I did replace the knob on that handle with a stainless steel metal ball, which I'll also be using those on the drill press head itself. So now I'm just tapping that pin back in place. This is where I realize I've made a minor error, so I end up taking this bolt out so that I can use the through portion of that bolt hole with a punch to get that pin positioned where it's supposed to be, as you can see here. Would have been easier to put those two pieces together prior, but here we are. Now I'm just ensuring proper functioning of the gear and the gear case. I'm gonna put the last couple of things in here, which are some uh, screw stops. These are adjustable, so you can use that flip-down indicator on the right-hand portion of the head there, and these screws to give yourself positive stops at 90 and 45 degrees both ways. Okay, so I put this on. I had the original um, Type U screw, which is more like a rivet, and then I took a nail, lopped the head off, and that's what's going to go on the top. So I'm not going to get this all the way installed. So I'm not going to finish these two rivets here until it's on and I know we're at dead 90 or uh, dead zero, I guess. So if this does still have a little bit of play, then I'll set it. And I have the original indicator right there. Fully broken down, painted, set back up. We've got our crank. Just see the gears inside, the original tag. It's all been stripped, it's all been de-rusted, it's all been painted, it's all been waxed and polished. All the bearing surfaces here so that rotational uh, aspect of it and it is ready to go back in service.
brushing along for this section of the uh, Unidrill restoration. This was the Unidrill arm tear down, uh, prep, paint, refinish, um, and get all uh, put back together. So this portion is what really makes a Unidrill a Unidrill. And with this back together, now I can start to focus on the rest of the pieces like this head next to me here. So as always, follow me along on Instagram at manmadeandma for more frequent updates. Um, hit the subscribe button down below and be on the lookout for the next video, which will probably be the head, either the head or the column. Only a few parts left, we're getting close. Um, and thank you so much for watching. See you next time.